This episode, I took Kerbin's atmosphere and flipped it upside down. Can I get a space plane to orbit without burning up? <laughs> Let's find out. Welcome back to the runway. Today we've got the Ares 4A, a very classic SSTO. At least I think it gets to orbit on Kerbin. I'm not entirely sure. You may notice a little difference. There's stars. Ah. You may also notice there's no indicator on the atmosphere. Now, this is going to be something that's prevalent throughout all of this because of how I'm changing this. So as you can see, my engines, they don't work. They, they don't work. Air combustion failed because I have no atmosphere. Well, not me, myself, but Kerbin has no atmosphere at all. So the challenge for today is to get to orbit around Kerbin, but the atmosphere is backwards. Not necessarily using a space plane, I might send up a rocket at some point as well, because I feel like that might be more interesting, because if we take a brief look at this, there's absolutely no chance that this craft will get into orbit. The iconic Kerbal X sat on the launch pad. Now, obviously, we'll all, we all know that the Kerbal X is a rocket that can get to orbit. Absolutely fine. But what about if the atmosphere is backwards, you say? Well, I don't know. I've never tested it. Let's give it a go. The the challenge is to get into orbit, and this is fine and all, but I can't actually see the atmospheric pressure. I kind of just have to get- well, it, the atmosphere is upside down, so anywhere past, say, 40 kilometers up is going to be pretty draggy, you know, pretty draggy. There's going to be quite a bit of wind force on this craft. <laughs> so far, it doesn't seem to be very noticeable. I'm using a mainsail engine, which actually benefits- but oh, I need to actually- <laughs> I'm using a mainsail engine that actually benefits from a, a thicker atmosphere, so as this goes up, it's ISP might increase. I'm not actually sure. Currently, it's 310. Oh, 309.9. So, no, this engine's actually getting more inefficient. And there we go. The atmospheric drag has begun. Now, the thing is, I have to shoot myself out of the atmosphere fast enough for an orbital velocity. However, as I get close to 70 kilometers, I am going to experience more drag, which means my speed is going to drop, and my speed has to drop, otherwise I'm going <laughs> to overheat and die. I'm going to cut out the engine, and look at the amount of drag! <laughs> 1,300, 1,200... <laughs> I'm almost out the atmosphere, and I'm out! Yes! So it shouldn't be too difficult to actually get an orbit from here, 1,300 meters per second left. Seems like a no-brainer, right? Seems absolutely fine. So let's do that. And there we go, we have an orbit. Periapsis is in the night side, I don't like that. So let's sort that out, shall we? There we go. Right, we have ourselves a nice orbit. Alright, I think I'm gonna burn retrograde here and I'm gonna begin my re-entry. Okay, here we go, 72. Let's see, let's see what happens when I hit the atmosphere now. And <laughs> oh, oh, I'm doing all right. I'm doing okay. Things are things are looking nice. Oh, you know what? If I actually deployed this stage for the heat shield, that might have worked. <laughs> now you'll you'll know that the atmosphere is gonna thin out. It's it's gonna mean that I can't use my power. Actually, what happens if I use my parachute? <laughs> what if I just deploy it now? Can I? Unfortunately, no. But that would be pretty cool. You know, let's get Bill out. Let's see what he's doing. Oh, he's about to fall off, that's what he's doing. Bye! <laughs> Rockets are cool and good and fine and all, but I really want to go back to doing space planes. I want to see if I can actually do it with the space plane, a reverse SSTO or something like that. So, it's time to get to the editor and build a craft. So for the craft, I'm thinking a fair amount of oxidizer for rocket fuel and slightly less liquid fuel because that's going to be the upper end of the atmosphere. Most of the atmosphere now is going to actually be a vacuum and it's going to start off being a vacuum as well. So this is going to be interesting to actually design a craft for. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I reckon that sort of design is good. At the front, I'm going to want an intake for when I get closer to 70 kilometers because at 70k, it's going to be the thickest, but I'm going to want the least amount of drag. Right, so I'm going to try and streamline my craft as much as I possibly can. Now then, I'm going to want some engines, perhaps rapier engines, I don't know. But I'm going to also want a rocket engine, and now normally I wouldn't use a rocket engine, but this time I need an efficient one. Now I could use the vector engine, but that's... Yeah, I mean, you know, you can get a fair amount of speed out of that, can't you? That's, that's not too bad. Using a vector engine, it's probably not the best idea, I'll be honest. I'll probably use a Reliant engine instead. Now, with a Reliant engine, I can get around 1,200 meters per second of speed, velocity of go fastness on this craft. But that's not quite enough, is it? I need more. And now it's starting to look a little better, 1,400, and then the engines, the other, the rapier engines will be able to cope with the rest. But I'm still going to need something, something that will get me into orbit. This SSTO has to be in three distinct structures. I was almost about to say stages, but you know, it's a, it's an SSTO. <laughs> it's one stage. I need a rocket stage for at the ground level, at sea level. That's what I'm going to need because the engines won't work. Then I'm also going to need a rocket stage for 
for when we get past the atmosphere, past 70 kilometers to orbit. So keeping that in mind, I'm going to need a lot more rocket fuel. Do we need some wings? Yes, but do we need many? Not really. So that'll do because at that speed, we're, we're going to be going at rocket speed rather than space plane speed. So we really don't need much in terms of wing surfaces and they cause a lot of drag. And you can see there's no atmosphere at sea level. So the center of lift is like, well, well I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Here we are again. Obviously no atmosphere. The wheels are a little bit too high off the ground, but it would look a little, probably look worse if I use small gear. So it, it's kind of, it, the craft is in that sort of middle stage. But anyway, that is not the, oh, oh, okay, nice. I forgot there was no atmosphere. I forgot. Yep, yeah, yeah, it didn't, it didn't seem to occur to me that there was a uh, no air. I can't use lift to actually bring me up like this. I actually have to, why is there, there's atmosphere on this one. Of course there's atmosphere on this one because when I revert, it doesn't, ah. There is no atmosphere, but my craft is veering off to the left, headed right for the runway light at the end. Perfect, brilliant. Really having a, a whale of a time. Oh, that's just brilliant. You know, I think a better approach to this would be to completely take off the gear and launch it like a rocket. There we go. That's perfect. All right, launching like a rocket. So that's, I have barely any control over this. I, I thought my reaction wheels are a little bit more stronger than this. You can, it, this really controls like ass when there's no atmosphere. Now that I'm gonna focus my time on getting a good angle of attack first to minimize the amount of time I spend in the atmosphere because if I spend more time in the atmosphere, I'm going to slow down more, but I also need to save some of this fuel for when I get out of the atmosphere. So what's going to happen is I'm going to shut down these engines. Now, I haven't actually assigned action groups for them. I should, probably should have, but I'm going to try and get my apoapsis to about 40 kilometers, which means the, end, the jet engines should kick in at around that height. At a guess, I don't actually know. Right, we need to make sure they're also air breathing. And now they are on full power. Hopefully, with a little bit of luck, I can get these engines to activate. But if not, I'm gonna be a little bit screwed. There is an airflow though. Oh, oh no, my craft's flipping over. No, I thought I gauged it properly. I thought, I was like, yeah, this will work fine. No, <gasps> the engine's just activated. Okay, well, um, it's not like it's gonna really, it's not exactly like it's facing the right way, is it? All right, we're back. We have some new ring, we, there, there, good one. We have some new wings. We have some reaction wheels. Everything is starting to look pretty good. The center of lift should be behind the center of mass. Now I'm unable to check because for some reason, because I've messed with the atmosphere, the editor's like, yeah, nope, you can't actually see where the center of mass and center of lift are. All right. There we go. And they've activated. They're not going to be putting out that much thrust yet. There we go. There we go. Yes. Okay, I'm going to time warp down a little bit. This is the sweet spot. 54, 55 kilometers is the sweet spot for these engines. Now they're starting to fall off. They're kind of bouncing around a little bit. They're going up, they're going down. It might be because the pressure curve for Kerbin isn't perfect, but this is some progress. We're about to get to what would be the equivalent of sea level, which means I'm going to start overheating very fast, but hopefully I get out of the atmosphere before that happens. And we're out. <laughs> Just like that. And we're out. And look at that. We have a fairly big apoapsis. So now the question is, is it easier to get an orbit around Kerbin? Is it easier to make space planes if the atmosphere is backwards? I, I don't actually know because I didn't think that was actually too bad. Now, would this work? If w Would this work? Would it have the same amount of fuel at the end of it? The same amount of total velocity change at the end of it? If I did this on Kerbin? I don't know. So leave your answers in the comments because I am genuinely wanting to find out whether this would actually be easier if the atmosphere was backwards. We're not done yet. We still have to get an orbit. For oxidizer, we're cutting it a little bit close. Now, the ISP of the rapier engines is probably worse than that of the Reliance at this altitude, I think. Now, if I happen to have a fuel drainage valve on the back here, I would be able to drain out this liquid fuel. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna drain the liquid fuel. I've never actually used the drainage valve before, so this is gonna be an experience for us both. So yeah, we're doing all right. Now I'm gonna start pointing upwards a little bit and just catch that atmosphere. Now, someone mentioned on one of my Beyond Home episodes, which if you've not seen those, feel free to check that out. There'll be a playlist link in the top right of your screen now. I remember seeing a comment saying that my angle of attack was very bad. And so I'm trying to improve that now. You know, I'm just being very slow about it very slight changes in the angle of attack and hopefully that'll work. 
Oh, not like that, though. Not like that. That was bad. <laughs> Don't do that. And just before the intake overheats, we're out of the atmosphere. Aquapsis looking very nice. Now, how we do for like... Ooh. Now, I don't actually need to drain that much liquid fuel. Can I drain and then not drain? Now, we need more oxidizers than liquid fuel, if I remember correctly. So, that should do it. All right. All we got to do... <laughs> what? It's just this random craft just flying from one of the other cursed Kerbal Space Program challenges that I've done. That's just brilliant. 852 meters per second is much better. That'll get us an orbit in absolutely no time, I think. Bruh moment. Okay, well, it's close enough. So let's re-enter this and just see. Obviously, this will this will explode immediately. As soon as it hits the atmosphere, it'll explode. But I'm going to hit the atmosphere in the most aerodynamic way possible. And here we go. Oh! <laughs> oh, wow. I'm surprised that made it. You could see that almost overheated. It almost ripped everything off the craft. Wow. But yeah, anyway, guys, that will do it for this episode. I have something really cool planned for the next episode, by the way. The next episode is probably going to be Kerbal Space Program, but my friend tries to stop me because currently that's what I'm working on. I'm coding that at the moment and it is looking pretty good. So hopefully if I can, if I can convince my friend to help me out with that and mess up my Kerbal Space Program game, then that'll be great. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. Um, if you do want to support the channel, Leave a like, subscribe, share the video. It really means a lot. It, it helps out the channel. It helps me grow. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see all you guys in the next episode.